All right, what's up family? Spencer Mack here. I'm gonna try and make this a collective video and just answer multiple questions from that last video that I posted. First one, I mentioned that I eat flax because I'm going for the omega-3 content. It's also really low in carbs and I'm trying to stay keto. And one of the questions was, isn't flax estrogenic? And yes, it is high in phytoestrogens, but I, through all of my research, have not been able to find any truth or proof demonstrating that it has an estrogenic effect on people. Interestingly enough, it might actually have a beneficial effect and lower the estrogenic effect in people. <clears throat> Namely, by the fact that the estrogens in flax are considered weak estrogens. They don't have very strong, um, very strong estrogen-like action on our body. So we have estrogen receptors on our cells, and if those weaker estrogens fill the receptor, there's not room for a stronger estrogen like the ones that we produce hormonally to attach. So in a sense, the phytoestrogens or the estrogens from the flax can actually diminish um, estrogens effect in our body. Pretty fascinating as most things are they seem to always end up being the opposite of what you think they are. So that's where I stand with that right now. Um, like I said I'm going for high omega-3s. Some of the older studies that I've seen demonstrate a benefit by having a 4 to 1 2 to 1 or a 1 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, but I never saw any studies demonstrating or studying higher omega-3 to omega-6 until recently. A very awesome study that used flax oil, in fact, they were blending soy and flax, so that's basically omega-6 and omega-3 together in different ratios, and uh, four different study groups. <clears throat> And the group that basically had 1.5 ratio, so it was basically three parts flax oil to one part soy, they had the most pronounced effects. And the effects they were looking for were re repro reproduction, like ability to reproduce, fecundity, your ability to, to um, become pregnant or to reproduce children. And these rats not only had higher body weight, produced more offspring, 30% more offspring per litter. They had higher testosterone, like I said, higher body weight, higher birth weight in their litter, um, higher amount of sperm, and healthier sperm. And yes, I know these are just rats, but I still take the value of the study because I know to some degree it's more than likely applicable. Um, and I find that that study is very valuable because I think that sexual reproductivity or the ability for us to reproduce is a very um, valuable marker to look for in the sense of health when you're going for health and longevity. So because of that I've been trying to get more omega-3s and omega-6s so I've been mixing like <clears throat> there are nights when I get over 21 grams of ALA, alpha linoleic acid, and that is omega-3. And so yeah, I'm, I'm up there. I'm definitely in the higher, higher um, percentage rate, and that's mainly because I'm being keto and can do that. And you know, I haven't seen any studies with that kind of high amount of omega-3 ingestion, but I'm excited about it. Um, actually, I have seen that high amount of ingestion of flax seeds before and it greatly increases EPA which is one of those two omega-3s that people get from fish oil or krill oil or algae oil. EPA and DHA are both omega-3s that have uh, anti-inflammatory effects and amongst other beneficial effects. So I actually have seen demonstrated in studies the ability for flax, flaxseed, or linseed is another term you can use to search for it. Oils increasing DHA in both humans and animals. So that's enough for me um, to pursue that as a DHA source. Somebody asked about hemp seeds. 
Yes, that's another epic source, but it is higher in omega-6 to omega-3. The whole omega-6s are inflammatory is all related to animal products from my understanding, from the research that I've done. I spoke about AA, arachinoic acid, I think it's called, is another form of omega-6 that our body can produce from linoleic acid, which is the essential fatty acid, omega-6 fatty acid. But I haven't seen any inflammatory response from high amounts of linoleic acid. It tends to be the, the AA, arachinoic acid, or whatever it's called that triggers more of a, an inflammatory response when there's too much of it. <clears throat> so I'm not worried about inflammation by consuming high amounts of soy or hemp seeds. Yes, yeah, so like I said, hemp seed has, I believe it's a three to one ratio, omega-6 to omega-1. So amazing food in itself. That's one of my main foods right now, hemp, flax, chia. Um, yeah, basically combining those guys and trying to make a bread out of it. Coconut flour. Um, what's another question? Fats, flax. What is your soluble fiber blend? Uh, I've gone on rants about prebiotics and the way they affect your psychology. A majority of your serotonin is generated in your gut. Think about that, like 90% of it. So if we're trying to like be happy or stoked on life, you have to have your gut in order. That's why I dove so far into prebiotics and the microbiome. The microbiome is the ecology, the ecosystem of your guts. Well, you have a microbiome in your sinus, you have a microbiome in your lungs, on your skin, so it is the ecosystem of the bacteria that lives in you and on you. And the most potent prebiotics, which are substances that are not digestible by us, but make it through our small intestine and feed the good bacteria in our guts. The most potent prebiotics that I like and that I have obtained and mixed together into a formula are gum acacia, also known as gum arabic, pectin, like from citrus or apples, um, inulin, which tends to cause people more distress, more gas, uh, so smaller amounts until your body acclimates with all of these small amounts as your body acclimates. Inulin, beta-glucans, super powerful immune stimulant, immune system stimulator, and anti-inflammatory, also mute hunger. These, these fibers are really pretty baller substances. Beta-glucans and what's the fifth one? What's the fifth one? Psyllium. Psyllium is a prebiotic as well, and it can carry a lot of moisture through the intestinal tract. Psyllium's awesome, and it's cheap. So I take those things, sometimes I ferment them, I make a yogurt, coconut yogurt, you can make a nut milk yogurt by throwing in prebiotic capsules into a mix with the prebiotics and maybe a little bit of sugar and let it ferment. This bee's checking me out. We were. Uh, we were just clearing all this land back here and one of the bees, beehives started getting a little aggro, so might have to move in a little bit, we'll see. Um, so those are the prebiotics, that's the soluble fiber blend that I make and consume. I put that in my breakfast shake when I break my fast. Yogurts are the jam, you gotta learn how to make yogurts. Um, somebody else was asking, what does the morning exercise look like these days? And that varies a lot. I do always make sure that I have a fundamental baseline and that for me right now is to make sure I wake up my entire breath through full inhales and full exhales and I've been getting back into dynamic tension I made a video about dynamic tension a while back and since I've been injured I'm like man how do I how do I train now you know my elbow is freaking worn out and my hip I can't even like lift heavy weights right now and I keep having people comment on my dynamic tension video, so it's like, oh yeah, right, I remember that. <laughs> I get a lesson from myself. So I've been bringing that one back, and a lot of dynamic tension with my breath um, has just been key like to fully engage your body. It does something to connect different aspects of yourself, almost different branches of your mind, body, come to be united through tension, through breath. 
So by the end of my breathing and dynamic tension, my body's fully awake, my lungs are fully stretched out, and I am present. Other days, I'll go on a jog. Uh, sometimes I'll bust out a bunch of push-ups and just train for like 15 minutes, go through a cycle of push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups. I just make sure I do something. Um, breaking a sweat is a good rule of thumb. And to make sure it wakes your breath up. Those are really the principles I try and follow. Always do something, make it break a sweat, and make it wake your whole breath up. And that's where I'm at right now with my morning routine in the sense of training. I think that's about it, y'all. Soluble fiber, fats, all of those could be gone into more depth, but I think that's pretty good. Get the idea, and then you can research it on your own. Fascinating world out there. Thanks for the questions, guys. Lots of love. Aloha.